I am Dorian. I am a daughter. I am a sister. I am a friend. I am a mother, mother of 12. Mm -hmm. I am a wife and a um, sister wife. I'm having a memory of when my sister reminded me of our agreement to be in a relationship together with the same man. She invited me to marry um, her husband and be a sister wife with her. So I placed this proposal before my priesthood leaders, my religious leaders, and asked their prayers on my behalf I earnestly knelt down in prayer. And uh, oh, humbly, humbly, humbly surrendered without knowing where this would all go. Beautiful moments on my wedding day. My sister combing my hair and preparing me. <sighs> Walking up the stairs, um, feeling like I'm in sacred space with God. Scared and ready. As my sister places my hand in his and gives me to him for all time and all eternity. I stand in awe that I expected of myself to be intimate with someone that I, I don't know in this life. I'm not, I'm not in love. I'm doing my duty as a plural wife and as a woman to give herself to the man and procreate with someone that I don't have feelings for. I, I sense a soul connection and I sense my agreement, and I sense where I'm going, and yet my, my body is in a panic. So the next day we arrive home and everybody's feeling extremely awkward, very awkward, very raw. But this is our duty, this is what, you know, this is our religion, and we're going to become celestial beings um, in this process. And now it's my turn for him to go and make love to my sister and experience the emotions of what that feels like and back and forth every other night. And it seemed like every night he was with her, just a deeper hole, a deeper gaping hole. It seemed like a wound just started to fester. Imagine your sweetheart in the kitchen kissing another woman and experiencing rage, fear, uh, sadness, anger. You feel hatred, you feel resentment. It's like, keep it to yourselves. I know that this is a part of our lifestyle, but can't you just keep it to yourselves? I remember the first time that I experienced hearing intimacy in a room above me and at first, feeling uh, inside my body just like this churning and this gut, like sick gut feeling of 
oh my God. And my first reaction was to, to laugh and giggle like, oh, it's not a big deal. It's just, they're just making love. And then experience, good, good God, what the hell? You know, what does this mean? What, what am I supposed to feel? What am I supposed to do? And feeling crazy. And it feels so twisted. And then seeking God to help you comprehend what, what, what is this inside of me that's going on? What, why am I experiencing this? Why can't I just embrace this? And why can't I just, why can't I feel elated for their moment of ecstasy? What, what is it that, what is it? that I fear when another is experiencing that which I desire in this, that which I am requiring myself to share with another. What is this? What is it? What is it that feels so toxic and poison? It will literally kill me if I don't get a grip. It will, in time, this feeling that I experience when I hear someone I am intimate with be intimate with another, what is this feeling that will kill me if I don't comprehend what it means or what it doesn't mean? Or <laughs> I don't know if I'm describing it very well well because it's so intense unless you feel that and you're willing to walk through it. What keeps me, what keeps me participating? <sighs> what keeps me participating is my personal desire to be able to love you as much as I love myself. To know that because another woman is receiving the love that I desire, it doesn't take anything from me. And those moments of triumph when I can actually feel <laughs> that much love for him and for her. Mm -hmm. I feel like a goddess. I've experienced being the goddess and wanting for you what I desire for me. I've experienced that. And I caught the pure love of Christ. And I experience who my essence already is in the flesh. <laughs>